Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.4.1 released today to all iOS 16 supported devices. iOS 16.4.1 is out to everyone around the world at the same time and is available for the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, iPhone 10, and newer up to the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. Now this came in at a fairly small 299.2 megabytes, that's on the 14 Pro Max, but it was a small update for all the devices here. Along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 16.4.1 and macOS Ventura 13.3.1. No other updates are out at this point. Now, if you're not seeing the update, make sure you don't have the beta profile installed as Apple's not going to be using those in the future. And also go into your settings, go to general and then software update. And if you're on the beta, you won't see the update as you'll actually be on a newer version with iOS 16.5 beta one. However, if you want to make sure you get this, just make sure beta updates are turned off. And if you're on 16.4 or older, you should see it there. Now there is no modem update going from 16.4 to 16.4.1, but let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go back to general and about. And as you can see, the build number is 20E252. And this particular update is more of a bug fix update. And so the first thing they've actually fixed has to do with the pushing hands emoji. So you can see that was a new emoji that they added with iOS 16.4. And sometimes the skin tone variations weren't showing. So if we go into a pushing hand emoji, maybe we want to change it. You can't necessarily change it just like that, but if you press and hold on it, you should see those skin tones. So press and hold on the emoji as you're selecting it and you should see the skin tone options. Again, press and hold, and apparently this wasn't working for some people earlier. It's working now. I never found that it was a problem, but it seems like it's now working. Also, they've fixed an issue with Siri where it wasn't responding properly. I actually noticed this with 16.4, but just figured it was Siri being Siri, but apparently it works properly now. So if we say the word, Hey, in front of the word Siri, it should work. So let me try that hey Siri and you'll see it pops up and we can check. So it's working properly seems to be working this time around. Now, previously there were some issues with weather. This has been a bug since iOS 16.4 that after it was out a few days, all of a sudden it stopped working properly. The weather widget just wouldn't show any data. And when you went into it, it would either never load, load very slowly or remain blank. Now this continued to be a problem for a few days. It was fixed and then it wasn't fixed. And then it was shown as down on the Apple status page. If we go to that in Safari, you can see here, it says all services are operating normally at this time it should be working. They haven't said that they fixed anything with iOS 16.4.1, but it's possible it's there that they resolved it in the back end of the code. And also here as well, where it's now working properly, the system status is up. So hopefully it continues to work properly. If you're not using the weather app, let me know what you're using in the comments below. Now, additionally, macOS 13.3.1 actually fixes an issue with Apple watch. While there's no Apple watch update, it does fix the auto unlock issue with Apple watch, not working with your Mac that should be resolved with 13.3.1. So you want to make sure you install that on your Mac. If you're having that issue, I heard from many of you that it was still an issue. There's no separate updates for iPad. It just fixes that same emoji issue. So that's the same thing fixed here as well as Siri. Nothing else has been updated as far as iPad goes, but again, make sure you've installed that. Additionally, there are security updates and this is always worth installing an update over. But if we scroll down here on Apple security website, you'll see here, let me refresh it. We'll see here, iOS 16.4.1 and iPadOS 16.4.1. They fixed two issues. One is IO surface accelerator and also WebKit. So they've fixed that. And you can see here the impact and description is what they've actually had as an issue and what they did to fix it. Processing maliciously crafted web content may lead to arbitrary code execution. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited to fix it. A use after free issue was addressed with improved memory management. The same is true here with the IO surface accelerator where the impact was an app may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. Apple is aware of a report that this may have been actively exploited. 
an out of bounds write issue was addressed with improved input validation. And then it shows that someone within Google's threat analysis group helped them with this one and with the other one as well. So make sure if you're wondering if you should install iOS 16.4.1, I absolutely would for those security updates and small bug updates as well, or bug fixes. Now, as far as additional issues, Apple has mentioned nothing about fixing the issue with the camera. This continues to be an issue for some where it's just not processing properly, especially skin tones. When maybe you're inside, this has not been mentioned whatsoever. It does seem to be improved, but there is no mention of it from Apple. So we don't know if they fixed that. Additionally, the storage bug seems to be fixed for most people with 16.4, where it's using much less storage as far as cache storage. And I've told you not to worry about this in the past where we actually have additional storage being used down here with the system data. So we'll let that load. There we go. It's using 14.54 gigabytes. This typically will decrease as needed and will change, but most people are saying that it's not using excessive storage this time around. So this seems to be true with 16.4, probably 16.4.1. And as far as battery life, I would not expect any major changes with that overall. This device, this is the one I have the current public version on. If we go back, go to battery, you can see here battery health and charging. I'm at 100% on this device. My main device that I use most of the time, I'm at 98% and it varies, of course, depending on how you're using it. But 80% after two years is normal. These updates don't typically affect that in any way. However, battery life overall, I got some information from Cameron who sent me his screenshots and on an iPhone 14 pro max, you can see it last charged to 80%. So it was for optimized battery charging. He had four hours and 31 minutes of screen active time and one hour and four minutes of screen idle time and hadn't even used 50% of his battery. If we take a look at the day before he's getting excellent battery life on 16.4 with six hours and 10 minutes of screen on time. So that's pretty impressive. Still using a little bit over 50% in general, it should be doing much better. Hopefully 16.4.1 irons out the additional bugs that people were having as far as that goes. With overall performance, I would not expect much of a change here. In fact, it really feels the same as far as ProMotion and everything else, and it really shouldn't affect performance at all, even on older devices, as Apple hasn't said they've fixed anything there. So if it was okay with 16.4, I would expect the same with 16.4.1. Also, the overall heat of the device, as we're getting closer to summer here, it still feels nice and cool to the touch. It's not warm at all. Now, as far as iOS 16.4.1, like I said, make sure you install that for the security updates, but iOS 16.5 beta two would be expected next week, probably Tuesday or Wednesday, as that's when Apple's typically releasing them lately, but the next beta of that should come out then. And if we have any additional features, that's when I would expect them to actually show up within the code or just show up physically. However, I would not expect a ton of features until iOS 17. So iOS 16.5 will probably release to the public sometime in May with WWDC coming on June 5th, we should see iOS 17 and that's where we'll see probably stability, new features, hopefully a new control center and more. But at this point, don't expect any major features with iOS 16.4 as Apple will actually work on those with iOS 17. So that's what we'll see next. As far as benchmarks, I did run those for those of you that are curious using Geek, Geekbench 6. And you can see here, I scored 2,523 for single core, 6,152 for multi-core. So compared to the previous version, it's a little bit higher as far as overall single and multi-core score. Not a huge difference, 6,102 versus 6,152 and 2,510 versus 2,523. So it should perform as expected, maybe a little bit better than it did before. So that's really everything with iOS 16.4.1. Not a whole lot to talk about as far as new features, those should be in iOS 17. But if you found anything else, let me know in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>